I saw a movie about uh, called Math Education and Inconvenient Truth on YouTube. Uh, a woman talking about math education in fourth and fifth grade. And I wanted to talk about some of what I saw there. As a college professor of mathematics, I know some of what she's talking about. But I have a different perspective than she does. Um, what I'd like to say is, when you think about math education as a child, what do we want to teach them? So, what is being talked about in this video, or what I'd like to talk about here is, do we want our children to learn multiplication tables and how to divide? Should we focus our education on memorization of techniques like that, algorithms, as she says? Do we want them to spend most of their time doing that, multiplication tables? Now, I'm not saying the answer to that is no. I'm asking the question. It seems to me that a lot of people looking at that aren't asking the question. They're just assuming that that should be something everybody should be able to do by fourth or fifth grade. And like I said, I'm not sure I disagree. I think they should know that in the end. But is that the focus? Should that be what we're talking about? And if so, why? Why should children learn to their multiplication tables and have a long division? Why would that be the focus? What is the big picture there? What are we going for? Uh, this particular video is talking about particular books um, that I'm not familiar with for teaching fourth and fifth grade, but I'm familiar with the ideas behind them. And I feel like the people who respond to this video positively that these books are bad may not either care to or have tried to understand why the books are doing what they're doing. So what I'd like to know from this perspective is what should education be? What do we want our children to learn? And I do think in the end we do want our children to have some skills and some of those skills may be somewhat obsolete because of calculators but they're not really. They're not obsolete. Everybody should know how to multiply and divide in the end. But is that the goal? Is that the end goal? I think not. I think that's really a fairly trivial thing to ask them to do. I think we should be teaching them how to think. When you listen to her video and she talks about her experience when she went back to college and the students coming in. These are the students I know as a college professor. I don't know the fourth and fifth graders very well, but I do know the math students coming in, what level they're at, both math majors and people who are absolutely not math majors. I was just teaching developmental math this semester. Those four students who come who aren't prepared for college math essentially starts from elementary school math all the way through high school in a year. I have to get them up to speed so that they can take college math, whatever that means. And I also teach all the upper level math courses. Um, etc. I'm familiar with this situation and I think that the problem is not that they can't multiply despite what some people can, a few people can't. That is not the main problem. The main problem with students today is that math is just a bunch of formulas. To them it's a bunch of algorithms and formulas they've been taught to memorize. Is that the way it was for you? That doesn't mean it's the way it should be. If 20 years ago or 30 years ago we all learned multiplication tables, and I did in third grade, memorize my multiplication tables and race to finish them, that doesn't mean that's the way it should be now. If when your children are learning math, they're doing it differently than you, that's not bad, right? Necessarily. It is if it doesn't work, but if it's not bad, if it works, that's what it comes down to. These books that she's talking about in education I see, the idea is to teach the ideas, not the algorithms, but what's the purpose. So multiplication, for example. Let's talk about multiplication for just for a second. Multiplication is just repeated addition. Three times two means take two and add it to itself three times. That's all it is. But if you never think about multiplication as just addition repeated or exponentiation is multiplication repeated, you tur turn mathematics, a very logical, sensible thing where things build on themselves and make this beautiful pattern, into a bunch of formulas you memorize. A bunch of algorithms you memorize, and here's the problem. This is what happened to those college kids who come in and aren't ready for math. It makes no sense. It's just a series of formulas that has no application to their life, that has no meaning, and so they're just randomly trying to pick out the formula that goes with this problem, and then this random formula that goes with this problem. They don't see any meaning to any of it. Let me give you a simple example of what I'm talking about. When I say, what is 6 divided by 2? Everybody says to me, it's 3. And I say, okay, why is 6 divided by 2 equals 3? And mostly, they're not that conscious of the reason, but 6 divided by 2 is 3 because I'm asking you. 6 divided 2 means 2 times what number is 6? 2 times what is 6? And most people can do it in their head. They say 2 times 3 is 6. Now I say to you, what's 1 divided by 0? Somebody who doesn't understand mathematics, who just has a load of formulas and, and memorized ideas, will get confused, go, which one is that one? Is that the one that's okay? Is that one that's not okay? But if they would stop and instead think about math, 
that it makes sense, that it makes perfect sense, that it's not just some random formula. One divided by zero would be asking the question, zero times what is one? Zero times what is one? Zero times two is one? No. Zero times two is zero. Zero times ten is one? No. Zero times ten is zero. In fact, zero times anything is zero. So one divided by zero, there is no, there's no such thing. It can't happen. Zero times nothing will ever be one. One divided by zero is undefined. It makes no sense. There is no answer, no solution, however you want to say it. Error is what your calculator says. It, for me, it's much better that the students understand that idea than that they have memorized 38 divided by 14 and done some math, or 125 divided by 6. These things are nice. I would like my students to have skills. I'd like them to have skills down pat. And I think that we insist on that. But I'm afraid that we rely on it too much. Now, having said that, those books are about the ideas of math. That's what they're all about. Another thing that students often complain about, and everybody else, is that math is taught in this abstract, useless way, has no implication in my life. Why do I ever need to know this? Every math teacher of all kinds has always heard that question. And the most frustrating thing about that question is, whenever you try to teach math, that is useful. In a context, that is useful. People just balk. The students complain about them. What are those called? They're called word problems. That's what students don't like. And also, parents don't like it. They want math to be what it was for them, I think. A bunch of formulas you memorize. And if they aren't learning the same skills you learned as a child, then it's not a good idea. But what I could see of those books, and again, I don't know those specific books, but I know some, they're trying to show math in an actually useful way, the way we all really do it as we grow up. Even people who don't like math and never do math, they do math all the time. And all reasonably intelligent people who do thought processes in life do it all the time. Math isn't a bunch of formulas. It's not. It's a thought process, and thought processes are a part of our lives. And so some people commented that these other algorithms of multiplication that she's talking about, that she showed something like 32 times 25, and she did 30 times 25, and then two more times 25, so 32 times 25 is 30 25s, and then two more 25s. Some people said, I've never heard of that, but I do it anyway. Right. That's just thought process. That's understanding numbers and what multiplication is. And many people just pick it up. But many people don't. Many people continue to think of math as these arbitrary rules. And they're the people that suffer the most. The ones that think math is arbitrary rules that none of it makes any sense to. They suffer because you cannot memorize meaningless gibberish. You can't. And you can't know where this meaningless gibberish fits there and which meaningless gibberish goes there. It has to make some kind of sense to you. So what those books are trying to do is make sense of it. Make math sensible and useful at the same time. The end of the story is not there, though.